Welcome to this presentation on Tasman District Council's annual plan consultation. My name is Alan Bywater. I'm the team leader for community policy. Uh, I have three council managers here to help me with this presentation and I would invite them to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Mike Drummond. I'm the group manager of finance. Hi, I'm Richard Kirby. I'm the group manager for community infrastructure. Hi, Matt McGlinchey. I'm the finance manager. So just a little bit of an introduction to Council's planning cycle. So uh, every three years, the Council develops its long term plan. So this has a time horizon of 10 years um, and we have referred to our current long term plan as Tasman's 10 year plan 2021 2031. So this plan covers what we intend to deliver to the community over that period, what it will cost and how much it will how, how it will be funded. For each of the years and plans, we are required to develop an annual plan. The annual plan contains our budget and the associated program of work for the year ahead. So the services we plan to provide, the infrastructure we plan to construct, how much all of that will cost and how it will be funded, including the level of rates. The annual plan is a chance to reset our plan and our budgets for the upcoming year. The annual plan particularly notes changes from the year compared to what we plan for in the long term plan. It contributes to our accountability to the public. Having consulted on and then adopted a long term plan, the annual plan is about communicating changes to that with the public and where there are changes, as in this case, that are significant, consulting on them. Once the annual plan is complete, it provides the basis for the council to set the rates for the year ahead. This is the timeline for our annual plan consultation. The council adopted a consultation document uh, on the 31st of March. This consultation document is available at the council's website um, and at council service centres and libraries. Submissions can be made from, for one month between 4th of April and 4th of May. A hearing will be held on the 18th of May. This is an opportunity for those submitters who wish to, to present their feedback verbally to councillors. On the 25th of May, the mayor and councillors will consider what they've heard through the consultations, the written ones, the verbal ones and on video, and they will make decisions on changes to the annual plan for the 22-23 year. And then finally, on June 30th, the council will adopt the annual plan for the new year. Since we adopted the uh, the long term plan at the end of June last year, quite a lot has changed in the wider economic, social and le legislative environment uh, that affect the council's planning. Thinking back to mid uh, mid last year, we were thinking that we'd seen the worst of the COVID pandemic. The government and the Reserve Bank were stimulating the economy to help recovery from the COVID-19 lockdowns and, and help, the, help the economy back on its feet. The aim was to protect firms and protect jobs. By early 2022, we've got high inflation. The government and Reserve Bank are taking action to try and reduce inflation through things like increasing interest rates. Currently, inflation is running at 5 to 6 percent. Uh, and council is affected by the shortage of construction materials, the higher costs and higher interest rates on borrowing. With the closure of the border for so long, getting and retaining skilled staff is also difficult. The government program of reforms that affect local government has continued and is increasing the costs for council. And as you may have seen in the media recently, the costs for the Waimea community dam have risen above those we planned for in the long term plan. More about that later. So here are some of the things that are driving the higher costs for the council in the 2022-23 year. Firstly, we're complying with the Water Services Act. So this came into effect in the second half of last year, um, and it has a laudable aims of ensuring the safe and efficient uh, supply of drinking water. Uh, Council is required to undertake several new processes to comply with this legislation, such as preparing water safety plans and increasing monitoring. Inevitably, these increase the costs. As discussed, the Waimea Community Dam costs have increased. Completion of the dam is getting closer. It was approximately 70% complete at the turn of the year. Waimea Water Limited, which is the joint venture uh, that is constructing the dam, has notified Council of increased costs to complete the project. In the long term plan, we had budgeted for a total cost of $158 million. 
This was the best estimate at that time. In the latest estimates, the cost has increased to $184 million. And again, we will talk more about the, how the Council will fund this increase shortly. Um, an increase in cubic metre water rates. Uh, the Council supplies water to a number of large industrial operations. We have been notified that these operations will demand substantially less water in 2022-23 uh, than previously. Whilst it does not drive up the Council's costs, it means that the large fixed cost components of supplying water are spread over fewer, fewer users. This increases the cost per cubic metre to the remaining users. Insurance. There's been a substantial increase in the Council's insurance costs. This is a result of some of the Council's assets being revalued to a higher value. This results in higher premiums to replace the higher valued assets. Then there has been general increases in insurance premiums as we see the effects of more frequent natural hazard events and climate change following through into premiums. We had planned for an increase in insurance costs in the long term plan, but they've increased higher than we had budgeted for. Attracting and retaining staff. As noted earlier, the labour market is tight. We anticipate that the costs of retaining and where necessary attracting skilled staff will increase over the next year. With, cost, with the cost of inflation running high, with cost inflation running high, workers will be seeking wage and salary increases that help them keep pace with those rising costs. In order to deliver the council services, we rely on skilled staff. If we lose skilled people and cannot replace them, often we have to use private consultants, which generally have a higher cost. Taking advantage of Waka Kotahi funding for walking and cycling projects. Waka Kotahi, the New Zealand Transport Agency, co-funds many of our transport projects. Since the long-term plan was adopted, we have had the opportunity to benefit from significant Waka Kotahi funding for two walking and cycling projects in Richmond. If we don't use the funding now, it may not be available in the future. These projects are a cycling connection between Church Street and Cambridge Street. This is an important connection to the fast developing Richmond West area and central Richmond. Secondly, a shared walking and cycling pathway on William Street to connect Hill Street and Salisbury Road. This will assist in safe, active travel to Henley School, Wymere Intermediate School and Wymere College. To be able to make use of the Waka Kotahi funding, we've added a budget of 970,000 in, into the 2022-23 year. The servicing and repayment of this has a very limited impact on rates next year because it will be funded by loans and will be repaid over several years. Mike Drummond here, the Waimea Community Dam funding. Um, we have the increase in cost from the 158 million to the 164 million. Um, under the current arrangements, 158 million was provided for in the LTP. That cost increase will be by way of interest only loans and the cost will be spread across the district, part going in the, into the Urban Water Supply Club, part going into the fixed charge that everybody pays and part being funded by the targeted rate uh, in the zone of benefit, which is primarily Richmond and the Waimeas. The second uh, overrun challenge we have is the $20 million increase. That's from 164 to 184 million. That also is being um, funded uh, through an interest only loan. Um, part of that, the irrigator portion, um, the interest on that will be funded for 12 months out of council's enterprise activity income. That's to allow us to negotiate um, other funding arrangements. Uh, the balance, once again, interest only, will be funded the same as the rest of the Waimea Dam through the Water Club, through the um, zone of benefit targeted rate and into the district wide rate. Hi, Richard Kirby here. Um, just uh, discussing the impacts of the water rates increases um, and most of it, as uh, Alan has outlined, uh, is the Water Services Act, which the uh, government passed last year. And under the Water Services Act, there's a whole lot more treatment and compliance requirements that Council has to implement in terms of supplying safe drinking water. 
and uh, for the 22-23 year, that equates to around $800,000 uh, extra costs. Then as Mike has just outlined, the Waimea Community Dam cost overruns uh, is included in there. And also, as Alan's already stated, um, we've had one of our major industrial consumers um, close down, um, and therefore we've got the less revenue, which spreads costs across other entities. So I'll go into more detail on that now. So the urban water rates increases are as follows, um, and this is for the Urban Water Club. So all those uh, water supplies that are in the Urban Water Club, and this is based on a nominal property capital value of $1 million. Uh, and the capital value is largely related to the second line there, the water services charge, which is a rate in the dollar. Um, so the first one is the district wide fixed charge, um, and that's going from 2878 to 4594. Uh, the water service uh, charge is, is increasing, and in this case from 36256 to 41190, an increase of 4934. And the volumetric charge is going from 242 to 316, which is a 74% increase, which is quite significant. And I'm just going to give you some detail now of how that 74 uh, cents increase is attributed. So here we have the Urban Water Club. So what is driving the $74 uh, increase? As I've already outlined, it's the impact of volume reduction from that uh, industry. It's a fairly significant industry located in, in Wakatu industrial area. And so that's contributed 25% of the 74 cents. And then you've got the Waimea Community Dam, and that's contributing around 40% of that increase. And then the Water Services Act, as I've outlined, 28% uh, of the increase. And then there's electricity costs and insurance costs, which have also been, have been highlighted. So that's, uh, that's what's uh, driven the 74 cents per cubic metre. So for Motawaka, um, the nominal property capital value, we've used 800,000 here. So they have the same uh, district-wide fixed charge. And then the uh, water service charge, the rate in the dollar, um, that has actually dropped slightly uh, for the uh, those connected to the supply, largely because you were aware as part of the LTP, the council decided to transfer some of the water service charge costs across to the firefighting rate over a period of time, over about five years, up to about 70% um, funded from Motowaka firefighting. So the Motowaka firefighting, as you notice on the bottom line there, is going from 38 up to 55, an increase of $16, whereas the water services charge, the rate in dollar is actually dropping. The volumetric charge, the dollars per cubic metre, is increasing by 35 cents. So now if we look at Takaka on the water rates increases, for a nominal cop, uh, property value of 500,000, um, and there's no urban water supply, so it's purely a firefighting rate. So there's the Waimea Community Dam District Fixed Charge, which is the same as for all the other schemes. And then the Takaka Firefighting Capital um, is increasing by 24 cents, and the Firefighting Operating is increasing by 28 cents. So just a nominal increase there. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Richard. Now let's talk about the options that are available for consultation. Um, in, in the long term plan, we had planned for a 4.17% rates increase in the in the 2022-23 year. Because of the cost pressures we discussed earlier, this is no longer a realistic option. We have developed two options and want to know which of these you prefer. In option one, we look to deliver largely the program we had for the 22-23 financial year in the long term plan. However, those cost factors that are increasing our costs uh, that we've already discussed apply and, and the rates revenue increase would be 7.66%. This is a lower risk option. Uh, council would have more flexibility to respond to events that take place during the year, like natural hazard events and those sorts of things. Uh, the council would have more ability to respond to the requests from the public, and there's a lower chance that we have a financial deficit at the end of the year. Option two, um, in option two, we've done significant work to try and find savings to help reduce the impact on rates. The thing, things that are putting pressure on the council's costs still apply, but we've looked to reduce costs in other parts of the program. This option requires a rates in revenue increase of 5.51%. The reductions we made are as follow. We've reduced the budgets for consultancy in water, environmental management, coastal assets, rivers and strategic policy activities. 
This means we'll be less able to call on specialist expertise and some planning and policy work could be delayed. We've lowered the budgets for maintenance and operations in transport, stormwater, water supply and rivers activities. If there are significant hazards or unforeseen events, we may need to exceed these budgets during the year. They also mean we have a lower, lower ability to respond to requests from the public in these activities. We have a higher forecast for fees and charges revenue. So this is particularly in the building consents and resource consents areas. Um, and we've based that on higher activity levels that we've seen in the current year continuing through the next year. Um, we have deferred some capital projects. So specifically uh, a trunk main upgrade in the lower Queen Street and the upgrade of the Headingley Lane pump station and rising main. Um, we've reduced the budget for stormwater and reserves land purchase in Richmond. Uh, we have a lower budget for installing emergency storage tanks at wastewater pump stations. These tanks help reduce the risks of water, wastewater overflows. And we have also, um, they're also these, sorry, these are all deferrals, which means we still plan to complete the work, but just not in the 22-23 year. And then the final change is deferral of $2 million worth of our digital innovation work. This is our program to bring the Council's information technology systems up to date. Um, we will revisit the, the deliverables and the cost to recognise the, the COVID-19 impact, recognise the scarcity of resources in our information services team and partners. Again, this is a deferral. We still pl plan to complete the work, but it will just take place uh, later. So those are the, the two options, and we are seeking your feedback on which of those two options you would prefer. So this diagram also shows the the two options, and so in in the um, in the bars you can see the impact of the uh, the different um, uh, costs which were, are outside the council's control. So you know, Wyomere Community Dam, for instance, which adds 0.61% on the rates revenue increase on each uh, of the options, um, and similarly, in, the insurance increase uh, being 0.74%. So you get the idea. I think this um, this diagram also shows that the um, where we've made the savings in option two is in the base program that we had put forward in the long term plan. So that's where we've made the savings to try and bring the rates revenue down and down to that 5.51%. So option two is the council's preferred option. So we understand that um, that that uh, people, our households and our business in our community are under a lot of financial pressure at the moment with the uh, the rise in a whole range of, of costs and the inflation that we're facing. And so that option two is the is the option that the council prefers. But again, we're keen to hear what you think. There are a couple of other changes that we'd like to draw your attention to. So these don't affect the rates revenue requirements for, for the 22-23 year because they're funded from other sources. But again, changes from the long term plan. So again, I'd like to draw your attention to them. So first one is about accessing government funding to support the, the, inf the infrastructure for growth. So the government has, has funding available for fast growing areas called the Infrastructure Acceleration Fund. This is designed to help councils develop infrastructure that enables houses and commercial buildings to be built. And this is part of the government's response to the shortage of, of housing in the country. We have three projects listed, uh, shortlisted, one in Takaka, one in Motueka and one in Wakefield. If successful, the government will contribute up to $24 million in funding towards this needed infrastructure. We have added some additional budget in the 22-23 year to contrib contribute to this infrastructure. The council's share of these will be funded by development contributions which are charged to, to developers so they do not affect rates. The second uh, project is, is a development at Port Terracurry. So Port Terracurry is an important asset for the Golden Bay community. Uh, in 22-23 we are planning to make a few developments to the port as follows. So we intend to develop a new toilet and ablutions block with associated sewage system, a grey water disposal facility for ships that are using the port, a new food grade wharf to meet increasing demand from the marine farms. We will extend one of the breakwaters to provide four new berths for larger commercial boats. And we plan to improve the existing main wharf fendering system to enhance health and safety. 
The development of the proposed new wharf and breakwater facility will require funding support from both the industry and from the government. The remainder of the costs for these improvements will be paid for by users over a number of years. So again, do not affect the rates for uh, the 22-23 year. And over to Matt. Thanks, Alan. Uh, yeah, Matt McClunchy speaking. Um, what you're looking at is two graphs in front of you. These um, were a key part of the financial strategy that the council put together in the last long-term plan. Uh, you'll note on the right the red line, the net debt cap uh, of 250 million. In both instances of option one and option two, uh, council remain under that net debt cap of 250 million. More work will need to be done though to keep under that 250 million in the 2023-24 financial year. Uh, to the left is the graph around the rates income increase. Uh, again, the red line represents the limits contained within the financial strategy. In this example, both options, option one being 7.7% and option two, the 5.5, are above the rates cap of 4.5% adopted in last year's LTP. Um, nevertheless, uh, council still consider it financially prudent to to go through with option two, um, as Alan has outlined previously or earlier. The next uh, slide talks about the effect on rates. So what does our preferred option of 5.5% actually mean uh, to the ratepayer? So you'll see this slide um, talks about what the actual dollar increase would be um, through a range of um, from zero dollars up to an increase of greater than six hundred dollars with the percentages out to the right so you can see the majority 54 percent will have an increase of somewhere between uh well up to two hundred dollars if you like and the majority of the balance of rates payers will be between 200 and 400 dollars a year and uh, which um obviously if you divide by the number of weeks in a year um drops away as well OK, so there are a number of other um, projects and programs that we have planned for the 2022-23 year. year. I thought I'd run through uh, some of these for you. Um, there are several, so I'll move fairly quickly. So in the water supply area, uh, there'll be a new water supply reservoir at the Motueka Recreation Centre. This is to provide extra firefighting water capacity. Um, we'll also be upgrading the reservoirs at Kaiteriteri to reduce uh, leakage and prevent the risk of contamination. In the stormwater area, we will uh, start work on the Motueka West Discharge System. So this is intended to convey stormwater from the growing areas north of King Edward Street, across High Street and into the existing drains. In wastewater, we will start work on the new Richmond South Pump Station and the Rising Main, and these help us to provide for growth. In the rivers activity, uh, work to restore the level of flood protection from the Motueka River stop banks uh, to their original level, which started in the current financial year, will be completed in 22-23. This work will help ensure that key parts of the stop bank network are more resilient. In our community partnerships area, we'll be working with Nelson City Council and the Ministry of Education on a three-year pilot program to track students who dropped out of school uh, or left, dropped out or left school in Motueka. So the intention is to help former students into a meaningful pathway to education, employment and training. In environmental management, we will uh, be constructing two new wetlands at Eves Valley and Motupipi and carrying out weed control in up to 10 uh, natural wetlands. So here, carrying on in that environmental area, um, we're currently reviewing the future development strategy. So the future development strategy shows where housing and business growth is to be located in the future, uh, in what form and what sort of in infrastructure will, will be needed to support that growth over the next 30 years. Public case, public consultation on the draft future development strategy is taking place until the 14th of April. Um, and in the 22-23 year, we'll start implementing aspects of that new strategy. We've been working for some time to review the Tasman Resource Management Plan and the Regional Policy Statement. Together, they'll form a new plan, uh, which will be called Areri Ki Uta Areri Ki Tai, or Tasman's Environment Plan. In the next financial year, we plan to engage with the public on issues and options and intend to begin making decisions about the content and policy within the new plan. 
Following publication of our coastal risk information in 2022, we'll start discussion, discussions on adaptation with coastal communities that are likely to be affected by sea level rise. And our work to improve fish diversity and abundance in the Tasman region will continue. Uh, so we'll, we'll work with private landowners to assess and remediate in-stream structures, things such as culverts um, for fish uh, abundance. In the community partnerships area, we'll be further developing our welcoming communities activities to create a welcoming environment for newcomers, recent migrants, former refugees and international students. We were accepted on the Immigration New Zealand program uh, at the start of two uh, 20, 2022 and aim to create thriving regions that are in have inclusive communities that celebrate people from all culture and identities. And then finally, in the parks and reserves area, we'll be working with Nelson City Council um, to progress the process to identify a location for a new future regional cemetery. With population growth expected to continue, there is a need to provide more capacity for future burials. How do you provide feedback? So there are a number of ways that you can provide your feedback into the uh, to the two options we talked about earlier. Firstly, you can make a written submission. Um, so you can either make that online on, at the council's website and you'll see the website address on the slide in front of you. Alternatively, you can just send us an email to ltp at tasman.govtnz. Sorry, ltp at tasman.govt.nz. Uh, you can send us a you can make your submission in hard copy either by mail or dropping it into a service center or library around the district. For those that are making written submissions, you can choose also to attend the hearing. So that's the 18th of May. Um, and as mentioned earlier, that's your opportunity to talk directly to councillors and uh, mayor uh, about your views. We've got a couple of other ways that you can make submissions on this occasion. So at the website, you can record a short video uh, submission. So this is up to seven minutes in length. Um, once these have been recorded, they'll be made available on the council's YouTube channel and they will be viewed by the mayor and councillors as part of their decision making process. And then we have three online sessions on the 20th of April, 26th of April and 3rd of May. Um, at these, you'll see a presentation not dissimilar from one you've just seen, um, but there's also a chance to ask questions of the mayor and councillor and an opportunity to share your views with them in some breakout rooms. Um, so lots of different ways for, for you to provide your feedback. Then before we finish, just thought we'll take the opportunity to let you know that we're also consulting on our schedule of fees and charges um, at the, over the same period. So, uh, so 4th of April to 4th of May. The council makes charges to help recover some or all of the costs of its services. Uh, this helps reduce the amount of revenue that we need to raise through rates. Um, the new charges that are proposed um, are, are available now for submissions uh, and they're available on the council's website. The new charges will come into effect on the 1st of July uh, later this year. To give you a little flavour of what's being proposed, here are a few headlines. So most charges will be adjusted for inflation, so upward adjustment. Some charges are made on the basis of, of a staff charge out rate. This will increase from $160 in the current financial year to $170 per hour next year. This reflects the increased cost of hiring and retaining skilled staff and the general inflation uh, across the council's costs. There'll be an increase of 20% in the fees at our resource recovery centres, and this is to reflect the higher cost for the, for the Nelson Tasman landfill business unit. And then some charges for building and resource consents, including deposits, have been adjusted to reflect the higher average cost of processing these consents. There are also a few new charges. So there's a, a new charge for revising or updating a traffic management plan after the corridor request approval. Uh, there's a new charge for a permit to take water from the bulk filling points at Richmond, Wakefield and Motueka. Again, this is a result of some of those Water Services Act changes we talked about earlier. And there will be a new charge for undertaking commercial activities on council reserves. So for all the details, go to your website, go to the council website, all the information is available at council service centres and libraries. With that, on behalf of Mike, Richard and Matt, I'd like you to th I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation and we look forward to hearing your views on the annual plan and the schedule of fees and charges.